With adding, you do need common denominators. This is very similar. Now we're going to still have one third and one half, just like on the last slide, but we're adding them instead. So watch what happens. I'm still going to start by cutting my thirds in half. And I want to add half of my cake back. So I have given these pieces to my family members. My third is this third. But my family members are nice to me and say, hey, you know what? You're going to the office and they're all going to want some cake. So let's put back some of our pieces so you can take them to the office and we'll just make our own cake once you go to work or something like that. They're giving me half the cake back. You okay with this so far? My story makes sense. So how many of the six pieces is half the cake? Oh, there's six pieces, three, three pieces is half the cake. So they're gonna give me back three pieces. So they, here we go. One piece they put back in the cake pan. A second piece they put back in the cake pan. What they want to do is put a third piece back in the cake pan, but it bumps. They can't physically put this half of a cake back without thinking about the six. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes and no. Their, their one half is going to interfere with my one third okay. as the adding has happened. They have to kind of wrap around and say, okay, here, we'll put our last of the three pieces somewhere else in the tray. It doesn't fit to have it just be one half. So that's what's happening with these common denominators. I have to think about six as I am adding because my half isn't compatible with my third anymore. Whereas when I was multiplying, then sure, I could think about my third and my half separately and the overlap didn't cause any conflict. It was just one piece. And how big was it? It was a six, but I could draw that before I had to think about that. Now I can't even finish my red drawing until I'm thinking about six already. So what we've been taught to do is find a common denominator. We would multiply top and bottom by different things. If we want six, we'll have to multiply the three by two to get to six. If I do something to the bottom of a fraction, to be fair, I have to do it to the top. And that will turn this fraction into two sixths. So that's these two sixths. Then I want sixths on the other side. So what do I multiply the two by? Three. And then to be fair, I have to multiply the top. So that turns into three sixths. That's the red ones. And then when I'm done, I have five of the sixths. Okay, let's try that over here with the pin key. And I don't know if I can record this one or not. Should I do it or does someone want to give me a wave pin key? Certainly. Okay, so I have half of my pin key. And um, my family is going to want to give this back to me, right? What I have is a third of a thing. So actually, I kind of started the wrong way. You go away, let's start over. I'm going to get a third of a thing. Everyone know the difference between the peace sign and the Mercedes sign? So I have a third of a pancake. And I want to take it with me. And somebody is going to give me another half of a pancake. So they want to give me this much. But when I, mean, I have to seal from this other pancake to do that, right? If they didn't have that other pancake, how would I do it just with my thirds? I can kind of say, 
and they keep cutting across the pancake. Let's cut this third into six. So here's the third I have. Here's the bit that we're giving you that's a half, but I'm thinking in six already. And we do the third plus the half. Make sense? Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to make a new recording for the next one so these don't get too long. Okay.